Do you have questions about water softeners? You know, some nagging question that's been bothering you for the longest time, maybe about how it works, or maybe about some troubleshooting or maintenance, or how long do they last, how to install, that kind of thing. Or maybe some kind of dispute you've got going on with your neighbor or your brother-in-law about some aspect of water softeners. Well, I'm gonna be answering all of your water softener questions starting right now. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. Welcome to my live stream. And uh, so this live stream is perfect for you if you're, like I say, if you need have questions about your water softeners, you're looking to get some answers, now's the, now's the time and this is the place. And uh, so we're gonna be talking about a lot of information uh, today about different aspects of water softeners. And, uh, and uh, we'll see what's going on. And again, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water. So, um, so like I say, I'll be answering your questions here tonight. And uh, But one thing I wanna uh, suggest to you, make sure you definitely hang around to the end because I'm gonna have a buyer's guide at the end. And I'm also gonna have, talk a little bit about the kind of water softeners you definitely wanna avoid if you're thinking about investing in a water softener for your family. Now, whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching the replay, welcome. And uh, so, of course, the big advantage of watching this live is that I can answer your questions right here, right now, live on uh, YouTube. Um, but the advantage of having the replay is that maybe something I talk about today in another week or a month or a year, you want to go back and say, yeah, that guy was talking about something that I'm interested. Well, you can always go back into the replay and watch that. And of course, if you happen to miss this uh, live stream for whatever reason, um, then uh, you can go into that replay and uh, check it all out. So I do have links in the description down below for a lot of the products I'll be talking about today and a lot of the videos I'll be talking about today. So you may have a question, I may relate you to a video. And again, those are in the uh, description uh, down below. And uh, during this live stream too, I'm gonna be sharing some exciting news about uh, the Gary the Water Guy YouTube channel. So again, uh, definitely uh, stay tuned and, and get ready for that. So start thinking about your questions. I see some questions already rolling in and that's great. Um, so like I say, any of those topics I talked about already, anything to do with water softeners is great. I know a lot about clack uh, water softeners like this guy beside me here. I know a fair amount about Fleck water softeners. Some of the other brands, uh, I'll definitely give you my best shot, but I'm definitely not an expert on every single water softener that's out there. But, uh, but like I say, troubleshooting, installation, whatever, this is the time and this is the place. So uh, one of the things uh, we've done a little bit differently with this live stream, and you may, may have noticed it already on the right hand side of your screen, uh, you'll see a poll. And I'm doing a poll during this live stream. Some people jumped the gun and got on it uh, a little bit earlier, um, as did I, by the way. And uh, so there's uh, some great information there that you definitely uh, want to check out. And this is for the folks that already have water softeners. I'd really like to know um, what, what you'd like best about, you, about having a water softener for your family. So you can check that out uh, during the live stream. And at the end of the live stream, we'll re talk about uh, the uh, results of that. So uh, let me just... Uh Great, and uh, so just as you're getting the questions ready, and like I say, there's a lot uh, already on the screen. I'll be answering those very shortly, but uh, just as everyone's getting ready, uh, I just want to talk to you about uh, some of the, the, the great news of what's going on in uh, for Gary the Water Guy's uh, YouTube channel. So um, big news, of course, over 7.5 million views, and thank you for that. I really appreciate that. If you're gonna watch them, I'm gonna make them, and that's, uh, and that's great. Um, the big news though, and, uh, and what I wanna share with you is that we've hit 28, or just on the verge of hitting 28,000 subscribers. And that's phenomenal news because that makes us the biggest water filtration um, YouTube channel uh, in North America. And uh, in fact, we're, we're so much bigger than our competition. If you take number two and number three and add their uh, subscriber account together, uh, you still won't be as big as our channel. So that's great. And uh, I really appreciate everyone that's watched. And uh, I really appreciate it. You know, if you like them, you share them, and you subscribe, I really appreciate that. That's great. And uh, so the more people that view the videos, the more families that I can help. And uh, all right, so let's uh, break off and answer some questions. I see there's already a pile uh, coming up. And great, keep them coming, because that's what we're here for today. And uh, okay, great. So the first one I have here is... Uh, 
And this is what I'll be doing. I'll be showing them on screen the way you see it here. And uh, so KM wanted to be sure I at least watched and upvoted your live stream. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate people participating during the live stream. Uh, it's great if you su uh, submit your comments and your questions. And that's what we're looking for here today. And I'm happy to answer them. Uh, let's see what else we got here. And this one's from Jay Molina. Uh, why don't they sell three quarter inch coupler with a hole for a pressure gauge that can be screwed in and installed after the water filters? Well, that can go anywhere. Uh, but really, all you need to do, so a pressure gauge is only a quarter inch male thread, right? So you can get any kind of a T and then get a, um, a reducer to put in, put in a T and then put in a reducer down to a quarter of an inch and you can screw in that, um, that pressure gauge. And you can put that anywhere. I can put that before and after a water softener if you want, before or after any other kind of water filters. And, uh, and that'll give you some great information. So, but really any hardware store or any plumbing supply place can definitely supply, supply with that. So it, they're out there. Uh, what else do we have here? Hey now, thanks for all, all you do here. Well, thank you. I appreciate uh, that comment. That's great. Um, I have a backwash rate question on an FOC iron filter. Can one work efficiently with 4.5 gallons per minute pump output for backwashing? An FOC can, yes, because FOC has catalytic carbon media in it, which is relatively light. So an FOC will work an FOB will work at that, uh, that flow rate, 4.5 gallons per minute, but an FOK will not. An FOK, so in, in case um, you're wondering what I'm talking about here, FOC is um, iron and sulfur filter, but primarily for sulfur. FOB is an iron and sulfur filter, but primarily for iron, and an FOK handles both higher, higher amounts of iron and sulfur. But in FOK, you need to have at least six and a half or seven gallons per minute flow rate. Otherwise, you're gonna have trouble backwashing it because the media is super heavy. That's why. But great, great question. Thank you for that. And for Jensen Grace, we are new to the water softener game. Well, that's why you tune in here. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Um, just moved, uh, to a uh, with a well supplied home with a salt softener without a manual yeah I, <laughs> how often does someone move in that there is a manual there right um what is the largest number of, uh, in gallons meant to tell us so uh, probably what you're referring to is the capacity remaining so so what happens is when a water softener regenerates it gives you so many gallons of capacity and uh, and then as you use water it counts down from there so that's one thing you can probably you can test that out for yourself right just run a faucet somewhere and look at the number on the screen if it's showing 651 for example in a minute or so it should be showing 650 or 649 because it's counting down the gallons and that's what that big number means and uh, and that also tells you that your meter is working so um, but thanks for that question, that's great. And welcome to the world of water softeners and well water. It certainly is different, that's for sure. I agree with you on that one. Um, all right. Uh, sorry, here I... Uh... Another question from Jensen again. Uh, during the second backwash, our pressure tank kicks off. This is not ideal because the regeneration process um, continues um, the countdown. How do we fix this? So I think what you mean is um, uh, the, the pressure isn't, isn't keeping up with the backwash of the uh, FOC. So the first thing you need to do is check your, your pressure switch on your pressure tank because often they're weak. And if they're weak, this can happen. It kicks off and then, and then you don't have enough water to finish a backwashing. It doesn't turn the pump on and it's a problem. So definitely would have a, a plumber or if you want, check it out yourself. Those pressure um, switches on a pressure tank are relatively simple and they're relatively low cost. So you can, if you're at all handy, you can go and you can replace that yourself. So uh, super easy to do. And, but if not, you can hire a plumber to come out and, and check it out. But you wanna sh make sure you maintain that flow rate coming from your uh, well pump to be able to backwash your FOC, FOB or FOK. All right, what else do we have here? Water softener rebedding question. What is your opinion on fine mesh media for a softener? Um, fine mesh media is great. A lot of uh, people recommend it if you have iron in, in your water. Um, 
It's, uh, it is a great media. Our, our Aquamaster and Water Boss uh, high efficiency water softeners use fine mesh uh, resin. And in a water soft like that, there, it's really maximized and its use is really maximized. In a standard efficiency type water softener, yeah, if you have a lot of iron, Generally, I recommend um, up to 1.0 parts per million of iron for a water softener, a standard efficiency water softener. A high efficiency one is actually less than that. Um, but you can go with fine mesh resin in a standard efficiency water softener and get up to almost 2.0 parts per million of iron. It's not recommended because you're going to go through a lot more salt. Um, and there's some other you know, drawbacks and things with doing it that way. I recommend when you get over 1.0 parts per million of iron that you should actually be going with an iron filter and a water softener after it. That's the ideal scenario. Uh, but thanks for that question. That's great. And uh, we have another one here from Juan Segovia. Uh, welcome, Juan. Um, hi, Gary. Uh, does resin go bad if not used or regenerated in three months? I was on vacation and my system did not regenerate. Fleck 5600 SXT 48,000 grain. It doesn't go bad. I mean, what will happen is that when, as you start using that water softener when it sat dormant for that long, you'll get some color coming out. You'll be wondering, what's with this brown color? And that brown color is actually coming from the resin, the media itself. So what I recommend in a, in a scenario like that is uh, use a media cleaner. So if... I like to suggest this stuff. This is ResCare, and uh, if you're on a municipal water supply where there's or well water where there's no iron, ResCare is a good solution for that. If you've got a lot of iron in your water, then um, Iron Out is a good solution for that. And again, I got a great video about um, about cleaning the media in your wa in your water softener, actually in your tannin filter too. And again, there's a link in the description down below. Definitely check that out. If for some reason you can't find it, just add it to the comments um, once this uh, live stream is over and I'll include a link in the comments below. But uh, yeah, great question. And got another one here from, from Tim. Oh, hi Gary, my softener has manual dials, not digital. Is there a setting for the number of people that live in the house? Um, if it's a Fleck 5600, so a Fleck 5600 actually is right up there. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's a Fleck 5600 valve right there. So I consider the Fleck 5600 valve oops, sorry about that. I consider the Fleck 5600 valve the Volkswagen Beetle of uh, <laughs> water softener valves. Um, they've been around a long time. They're very basic. Uh, they, they're not as economical as you might think they are. And uh, they, are, they aren't very efficient either. So, um, but on that, there is a setting depending on the model. Uh, actually, this one has it, sorry. This one has it in the settings here. So I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll see if I can, my zoom will work. Is it working? Yeah, on the zoom. So the dial that's right here, okay, you can see on there it shows a couple people and then some numbers. And that what relates relates to is how many uh, members in your family. So in other words, um, and there's a, uh, where is it? Yeah, so you match up your hardness to the number of people. So the, the the dial right next to it is hardness, and the outside dial or the the outside dial here is the people. So so what you do is if you have a hardness of 15 and you have four people, you put the four next to the the people, and uh, and that's how you set those. Is it very efficient? No. Um, if it's working. Yeah, you can maintain it for a while, but uh, you'll be amazed that if you get a new water softener, especially a high efficiency water softener, um, how, <laughs> how, much, how much less water you're going to be using to backwash and how much less salt you're going to be using. But uh, yeah, great question. And uh, Jensen thanked me uh, for uh, my comments earlier. That's great. And we got Hey Now is back. I have a summer home with a water softener. I'm there approximately every two weeks. When I'm there is usually for the weekend. I 
usually uh, do a regen when I'm there. Is this overkill opinions? No, it's not overkill, and it's a great idea. So where we are here in, um, we're in cottage country, about 100 miles north of Toronto, and uh, so a lot of my customers are just exactly like you are. Uh, they're up on, on the weekends, uh, primarily in the summer, yeah, they're here for two or three weeks or something like that. But uh, no, uh, most water softeners, like the clock, um, like our Hume uh, water filtration water softeners, use the clock valve. And the default on those valves is uh, a 14 day override. So, what that means is if you haven't used up your capacity in the water softener, every 14 days it'll go automatically. So, what you're doing by regenerating every two weekends, okay, is you're, you're, you're keeping that media going and you're going to extend the life of that water softener 100%. So, definitely keep that up. I think that's great. Uh, that's a great practice and I recommend that uh, to my customers here locally too. So, yeah, great. Thanks for bringing that up. It's a great point to share. Uh, whoops. Sorry. Um, okay, great. We're caught up with the questions. That means you have to send me some more questions. So I'll ask you a question um, uh, about some of the newer people out there. Let's say, um, so what don't you know about your water softener? What are you embarrassed to ask about your water softener? Please put that in the comments. You're amongst friends here. Nobody's going to laugh at you. Certainly, I'm not going to laugh at you. So uh, definitely uh, uh, check that out. So. Uh, Okay, so something else that's new on our channel is shorts. What are shorts? They're short 60 seconds or less videos and they're done in a vertical format. So these, these long form videos that I've been doing, got 350 of them out there, are all horizontal landscape, right? So these shorts are intended to be viewed on a, a smartphone, something like that. And the idea of these shorts is that we can cover um, obviously very short topics, how to reset the time, you know, things like that. But it also gets us out to a newer audience because these are viewed um, on the shorts uh, shelf in YouTube, but they're much like TikTok or, or um, uh, Instagram Reels or something like that. So um, I've got a link to a playlist of my shorts. I'll be publishing. Uh, probably about four shorts a month going forward. I'll still be doing the long form videos, but uh, there'll be some shorts there too. So you definitely want to check those out. Um, one of the big advantages of those is I shoot them on my iPhone, so I don't have to do the big studio setup every time I shoot them. So a lot of them I, I shoot around my home, in my basement, all kinds of different places. So it's going to get me a little bit out of uh, this environment and uh, it'll make things a little bit more interesting for you. So like I say, definitely uh, check those out. And... Um, yeah, so we talked about the shorts. Um, great. So, um, and again, all this is available on my um, on my um, YouTube channel, right? And my YouTube channel, if you go to GaryTheWaterGuy.com, that's where you'll find me. And one thing I, sh I should mention about um, about that, uh, I definitely encourage you um, to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. The the, the biggest reason why. <laughs> the biggest reason, see what I mean? The biggest reason why I suggest you subscribe is because that way um, in your uh, subscription um, feed in your YouTube channel, it shows you, um, it, it shows you where uh, the, the updated videos and that that are available all the time. So you don't have to go searching for them all the time. You just go to your subscription feed in, in your, uh, on your YouTube homepage and in there will be my latest YouTube video. I do a new YouTube video at least one every week. Uh, typically publish them 5 a.m. on Friday, uh, Saturday mornings, but unless I do a live stream, of course, it's going out there right now. And uh, okay, so let's talk. Uh, I got some more coming in, and that's great. I'll just just keep them coming, and in about five, a few more minutes, uh, I'll get to them. But uh, but let's talk a little bit. What is hard water? So so what makes water hard? So water doesn't fall from the sky hard, right? It doesn't sit in a lake as being hard. It absorbs minerals in the ground, and it becomes hard. So people say, well, I'm on municipal water. My water shouldn't be hard. Okay, well, it depends. Where does the municipality get, it, get its water from? So if it gets its water from the ground, it's going to be hard. And that's how it is. Same with people that have well water. Obviously, their water's coming from the ground. It's going to be hard. So you're going to likely going to need a water softener because water is a natural solvent. It absorbs the, the minerals in the ground, calcium and magnesium primarily, and that's what makes the water hard. 
All right. And uh, so I do have a, a, a great YouTube video. If you want to get some more information about that, I do have a great YouTube video that uh, talks about that. And again, I got a link in the description down below. And, uh, and as you can see in this video, I'm holding something in my hand. Gary, what are you holding in your hand? That is a piece of pipe. So this is a two inch diameter pipe. It's from an apartment building here in town. And I'll hold it a little bit closer to the camera. Will it focus that close? Will it focus that close? Yes. Okay. So you can see these are all layers. So yes, this was an apartment building for 50 years and this was the hot water line. And uh, so what happened after 50 years of use, the apartment building had no hot water whatsoever, none. And uh, the, the reason they had it, because the pipe became totally clogged with those layers and layers and layers of hardness. And that's what hard water does. It coats things, but it doesn't just coat it once, it coats itself. And that's why it makes layer after layer after layer. And that's what causes all the grief from hard water is that buildup inside there. So, uh, okay, so I see we're ahead on, uh, I'm falling behind here on answering your questions. So let's dive right in. That's what we're here for. And uh, so Louis, Flores, I think we've uh, heard from you before during our live streams. Welcome back. What do we do if there's a boil water notice and we have a whole home water filter and softener? Well, if it, so what, what, that's a great question. So what's happening is the water softener isn't going to, so you've got a boil water um, advisory because the municipality has found that there's a bacteria in, in your water, in all your municipalities' water. So they're asking you to boil your water usually two minutes rolling boil to make sure the water's bacteria free. The water that passes through, the water softener doesn't kill bacteria, so that's not gonna get rid of it. If you have a whole home uh, carbon filter or something like that, again, it's not gonna get rid of the bacteria. You still have to boil your water. So keep that in mind. If you're on well water and you've got an ultraviolet disinfection system, you don't have to boil your water. So the next question is gonna come up, what about a reverse osmosis system? Doesn't a reverse osmosis keep bacteria out? It does, but I wouldn't count on it because um, it will keep bacteria out, but eventually the bacteria will eat through the membrane and then the bacteria will leak through. So if you don't have an ultraviolet light and you're on a municipal water system and you do have a reverse osmosis system, I would still boil your water just to make sure. But great, great question. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah. It's a question from Nancy. Should the brine well be solid at the bottom? No. And I assume you mean solid in terms of it's solid salt at the bottom. I noticed in one of your videos that it is. Ours is open. Is that okay too? Oh, now I'm not sure. Is the brine well? Oh, I know what you mean. So <clears throat> that's a great question, Nancy. So this is what Nancy's talking about. This is a brine well. Okay, and at the bottom, you can see this one's closed, right? So are there uh, ones out there, like Nancy says, that are open on the bottom? Absolutely. Um, and they work just fine. Um, the only thing you have to be careful of, that's why I like the closed ones, is because if during service sometime in the future, somebody lifts it up or, or does something or moves it around when you're adding salt or cleaning out the brine tank or that kind of thing, you don't have to worry about if it comes up, if some salt gets underneath and, uh, and then it gets inside and causes you grief inside. So that's why I like these ones better because they're closed. But is there a problem? No. Uh, does it work okay? Yes, it does. So um, definitely don't worry about it, Nancy. But thanks a lot for that question. It was a great one. And uh, and Louis, shorts are great, and that's how I first learned about y'all. And thank you for that, Louis. And that's one of the reasons why shorts have become popular is because it's, because they're so short, people scroll through them. They go, watch this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And they stumble across YouTube channels that they've never even heard of before. And that's what happened with Louis. He stumbled across our YouTube channel and that's great. And again, that's one of those reasons why I'm out there with the shorts. And Josh is here. I use the same equipment as you, except the filter head. Yeah, so what I'm t what Josh is talking about is the filter head, this part at the top, which is also called the head. So there's different brands out there. So the tanks are a fiberglass tank. The media inside is the media inside. And the, the valve is what does all the work. So I favor the Clack WS1 valve, which we use on all our Hume water filtration, uh, water softeners, iron filters, tannin filters, all that other kind of stuff. I'm very familiar with it. I believe it's the best product on the market. Can do other 
Brands of valves work uh, too? Absolutely, they work. And if you're getting good performance from yours, absolutely, no problem at all. I just find that with the programming, with the troubleshooting, um, so many other aspects of this valve, I really, I really um, think it's the best. And I encourage any, every, sorry, I encourage everyone that's considering getting a brand new water softener for whatever reason is to, to get one with a Clack WS1 valve, like I say, our Hume uh, water filtration. Thanks for the question. And. Uh, Got a question here from Pam H. How do I find out what kind of resin my water right 740 takes? Um, the best way to always figure out what comes, what came with your equipment is to contact the manufacturer, give them your model number and your serial number and ask them. Okay, so on our websites, um, I did a video, sorry, I did a YouTube video about a year or so ago where I replaced the media in the water software in my home. And, uh, and it's become a very, very popular video. We're getting a lot of questions about it, a lot of comments, and a lot of people are investing in replacing their, their media. And uh, the media that we have on our websites is very generic type uh, media. So if you can't figure out what you have or you can't contact the company or the company is no longer in business or whatever, the media that we have works great. Uh, Excel Soft, I think it's called. Uh, if you're not sure, just add it to the comments down below. I'll uh, I'll add a link uh, to that. But uh, it's a great generic type media. But if possible, always check with the manufacturer first to make sure you're getting what's compatible with your water softener. Does the media vary that much from water softener to water softener? No. High efficiency ones use fine mesh resin. Standard efficiency ones use regular resin. Pretty much that's it. But like I say, check check with the manufacturer. Always best. Uh, oh. Had that one already. C2 odds and ends. Hi, Gary. Keep up the great videos. Well, thanks very much. I appreciate you watching. I'm from Cambridge, Ontario. Ah, I know it well. Uh, known to have uh, very hard water. And you're right, that whole area. Cambridge, Guelph, uh, Kitchener, Waterloo, uh, Milton. Uh, three months ago, I jumped our old Auto Troll water softener. That was from 1985 from the original owner. Yeah, and uh, the old Auto Trolls were real workhorses, much like the Fleck 5600, right? And uh, um, definitely encourage you, if you're thinking about getting a new water softener, to consider getting a Clack WS1 valve water softeners, like our Hume ones. Um, you'll, be, you'll be pleased with the performance. You'll be pleased with how much more efficient they were they are than the outer troll but you'll definitely also be pleased that if you do have any um, concerns with it in 10 15 or 20 years how easy it is to uh, do the troubleshooting the diagnostics etc with it so uh, definitely worth uh, checking out if you're considering replacing that water softener um Tim, oh yes, you can look it up on YouTube. Yeah, that's right, and and thanks. And by the way, I really appreciate it when when other people chime in and make comments to the other people that are uh, commenting. That's great. Keep it positive, though. You know, everybody is on uh, different levels and that kind of thing. And it's the same in the comments under my YouTube um, videos. I try to answer every single comment, and sometimes it takes a few days before I get there because I do have a full-time job too, uh, looking after my customers here. And uh, so, so if you have some suggestions or some opinions, so it may not be what I agree with, but uh, I'll definitely comment on whether I agree with it or don't agree with it, or maybe it's just a new way of looking at it. And I definitely appreciate that. So yeah, please uh, keep those comments coming. And Louie, any recommendation to undersink RO system that won't waste a ton of water? Um, yeah, that's a great question. So um, I've got a great video that compares um, Amazon's best-selling reverse osmosis system to our Hume Water Saver 75 reverse osmosis system. That's this one back here. I don't know if you can see it or not. This one right here, Hume Water Saver 75. And uh, so this is a high efficiency reverse osmosis system. So what that means, very little water goes to the drain. So most, uh, I believe in, when I did the test on the, um, on the Amazon one, it was six gallons of water that goes to the drain for every gallon of water you drink that that uh, reverse osmosis drinking water system produced. This one here was closer to two, two and a half. And remember, these are real world tests at the cold water we have here in, uh, like I say, 100 miles north of Toronto. If you're in a warmer climate, 
your yours will waste less water than those do. But again, the ratios will still be the same. So if you want a, um, a reverse osmosis system that wastes very little water, go with the Hume Water Saver 75. If you're not sure where to find it, just um, add a comment down below and I'll include a link so you can find it easily. But thanks for the question. And Hey now, is FOC the best option for smelly well water that is a result of hydrogen sulfide? It is the best option, but we have to be careful of the iron content. If the iron content is anything above 1.0 parts per million, because often iron is in the water when you have a hydrogen sulfide too, okay, then FOK is a better choice. Now, with an FOK, again, you have to make sure that you've got at least six and a half to seven gallons per minute flow rate to be able to backwash that very heavy Catalox media that's in an FOK. So, um, so, I, but again, I've got a good uh, video, a great video about those three and the parameters, etc. It's called uh, which one FOC, FOB, FOK. So uh, check that out. If you can't find it, add it to the comments. I'll put a link in. Uh, Scott Miller, Gary, your videos help me maintain my iron filter and water softener. That's great, Scott. I, I, you know, there's lots of folks out there. You'd be amazed at the comments I get. Uh, you know, Gary, you saved me a service call. Gary, you saved me $300. And that's the whole point of these videos. I started making the videos, I guess, almost nine, yeah, nine years ago. And, uh, and the idea was to educate folks like yourself so you could help yourself. Not just to save money. It's also to understand what you have. So if you do have, you know, if you're not handy and you have a service call, at least you'll have some idea what you're talking about when the guy shows up and tells you, hey, yeah, you just need a new water softener. You know, you can, you can help with the troubleshooting and uh, you can give them some really good information to help you help yourself, right? And uh, so, but again, thanks a lot for that. I really appreciate that, appreciate that comment. And C2 odds and ends. We installed a new Vcool WS series with Clack WS1. We followed your install tips. Worked out great. We changed out uh, main supply um, from meter to softener, from copper to PEX. Yeah, and you can do that all the time. So, you know, not so much anymore, but it used to be years ago um, when we started doing installations and we started using PEX. People would question us. They'd say, well, the rest of the house is copper. Why are you using PEX? Well, of course, all the new houses now are all built, are all uh, the use pecs in the new houses. Uh, we can use less elbows. We can use a, an arc instead of an elbow, so it um, slows down the water less. Um, pecs is slipperier than copper, so it maintains the flow rate better, uh, maintains the pressure better. There's a lot of advantages to pecs. And uh, so, yeah, I definitely encourage you. And PEX is more DIY friendly, right? So uh, I definitely encourage you, um, if you have copper and you're, you're on the fence about doing it in PEX, if you feel more comfortable with copper, do it. If you feel more comfortable with PEX, no problem at all. I don't like shark bites, I'll tell you right now. So we try to avoid choosing shark bites if we can. Um, but that's just a personal thing. I, if I use PEX, I like to use a crimping tool. But that's just me. Okay. Um, great. So Juan, is it uh, better to unplug the water softener when away from the house for an extended period of time, especially if main water valve in the house is off? Um, my Fleck 5600 was on a 50, 14 day override for 13 months. That's a great question, Juan. And uh, that's the kind of question we get here in um, in cottage country all the time and uh, so let's just think about this for a second if you unplug your water softener it's not going to go through a regeneration cycle but if you turn off the water in the whole house in other words there's no water flow there's no water pressure okay the water softener is going to think it's gone through a cycle every 14 days and yeah the the piston is going to move and the valve is going to move and all that other kind of thing but nothing's going to happen because there's no water pressure there's no water flow so either way is if you're uh, away for a period of time, uh, especially if the main. Yeah, so do you have to unplug your water softener? No, you don't. And, uh, and, and you know, the thing is when you unplug it, now you have to reset the time, right? Now, any modern water softeners like the Clack WS1 electronic ones, if it's been unplugged for a period of time, you just plug it in and you reset the current time. The regeneration time, all the other settings that we program in are in there for good. So you never have to worry about losing the settings. So um, 
So, so that's a good point. Should you unplug it? No, you don't need to. Do I unplug mine when I go away? No. I turn off the water in my whole house. Uh, if I go away for extended period of time, in case something should happen to leak while I'm gone, and uh, then when I come back, I just turn the water back on, press and hold down the regen button, regenerate it, and I'm good to go. All right. Uh... Sorry, Juan, I don't understand, but no water coming from outside. Uh, that must be a continuation of a question you asked earlier, right? Um, no, sorry, it's I'm out of context on that one. So uh, anyway, maybe you can fill me in what you're asking there. And uh, so Scott Givens, when getting a new home, what's the best whole house water filtration treatment softener system and why? Um, <laughs> First of all, when you get a new home, I always suggest you have your water tested because there are areas where you really don't need a water softener. It's rare, but there are areas where you don't need a water softener. Most areas do, and you really need to know how hard your water is. Um, generally, I recommend um, a clock valve water softener like our Hume uh, water filtration equipment. Why do I recommend that? A whole bunch of reasons. First of all, they're totally non-proprietary, which means you can get re you can order replacement parts from us online, but you can get replacement parts for a clack valved water softener from any water filtration dealer in North America. There's hundreds of videos, YouTube videos on YouTube about clack WS1 valve water softeners. I know because I've probably made about 80 or 100 of them myself. Um, so there's a lots of information there. You can easily get um, the manuals. You can download them online. There's all kinds of things you can do with them and they're super easy to troubleshoot, super easy to uh, problem solve. But I'll tell you a secret about these. Um, in terms of parts wearing out, they don't. I mean, this valve's been around for 20 years. I've been selling them for 19 years. In 19 years, how many motors have I replaced? None. <laughs> I bought a spare motor 19 years ago to have it on hand here for when I needed it. Never replaced it. Is it easy to replace a, a, a motor in a clack water stop? Absolutely. In fact, if you uh, check uh, some I've got a rebuild video on a clock water softeners. Check that video out, not because you need to rebuild it. It's just because to see how simple it is these valves come apart. Because in these valves, they don't have one screw, not one nut, not one washer, not one spring. All the fittings, all the parts just fit together, snap together, and, and they stay home. To replace a circuit board takes under probably 20 seconds to replace the motor not that you ever need to apparently um, takes less time than that so they're super easy to work on super easy to get parts for very very economical very efficient and uh, and they got all kinds of neat stuff like it'll maintain 62 days of history in there so it'll tell you how many gallons of water you've used today yesterday and the day before back 62 days so you can determine something. I had a situation uh, recently where there's a pizza place that bought a water softer from me and uh, and they said, hey, it's not working. It's been in for a couple of months, it's not working. And uh, so I went to where it was installed, which was in the unit next door to the pizza place, which was under, um, under construction. And when I went into the history, I could see that uh, the last day it was had been plugged in, it was using water, but the previous 36 days it hadn't been plugged in because it wasn't using it wasn't using any water so it wasn't softening the water and that's why it wasn't working so we got that sorted out but information like that really helps you with the troubleshooting and that's why i recommend the clack ws1 valve it's a great product it's not a cadillac it's a chev but it gets you down the road everywhere everywhere that cadillac does so but thanks for that question that's a great question um and again, if you want to get more information about the Clack WS1 valves or our Hume water filtration products, check the links down below. I've got lots of videos on them and, uh, and, uh, and links to my website, and, uh, which I guess I should talk about a little bit right now. And uh, so what is our website? WaterEstore.com in the U.S., WaterEstore.ca in Canada, and we offer free shipping and uh, discount pricing. All right, so let's go on. Enough of the commercials. Let's go on with some of the more stuff. Uh, Nancy. Oops. 
After a uh, softener backwash, what would cause very salty, foamy water out of the taps in the morning? This only lasts for a little while and then it clears up. Hey, that's a great question, Nancy. So what happens is when it goes through its regeneration cycle, and, and if you're not sure how a water softener works, hey, no, no, no problem there. I've got a link uh, to a video down below that explains exactly um, how it works. And uh, um, you may want to check that out. But, but what's happened in your case there is that, so the first cycle it backwashes, so it cleans the media, flushes it all to the drain. The second cycle is when it sucks the brine into the, um, into the, the, the brine tank. This, sorry into the media tank to uh, to regenerate the media that's inside there if someone ran some water in your house when it was going through that cycle you would get that that happening okay um, more than a toilet flush but if someone ran some water for a little maybe to, had a quick shower in the middle of the night or something while this was regenerating that would cause that um, if it happens on an ongoing basis that means the rinse after the brine cycle isn't long enough. You need to extend the rinse uh, time or some water softeners even have a backwash after the brine cycle and then a rinse. So you can ex uh, either add that backwash if yours allows for it, the, obviously the Clack WS1 does, um, add, or add two or three minutes onto the rinse time to get rid of that um, salty water and then you're good to go. But great question, thanks for asking that. Uh, this isn't a question, but it's a comment. Hi, Sam. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you, you adding your comment, and uh, that's great. So I'll take that off, and we'll go on to the next one. Another one from, from Juan. Is it possible that my Fleck 5600 SXT could suffer any damage if that happens? I know I made a mistake when I turned the, the main water off and override 14 was on. Uh, hi from Clearwater, Florida. No, it, it wouldn't cause any damage at all. If your water was off, if it was unplugged, uh, any of that stuff happens all the time and uh, no damage. You'd be amazed at how rugged water softeners actually are. And uh, so no damage. And C2 odds and ends is back again. After regen, sometime the next morning we'll get a weird smell from our bathroom faucet. Only faucet we get the smell from. And we tried doing the bleach trick uh, for cleaning the system, but no, tr no luck. When you say the bleach trick, I assume you mean uh, putting bleach in with the, um, with the salt in, in the brine tank. There's another bleach trick. If, if you just have smell coming from one faucet in the house, then it's probably coming from that drain. So what, what's happening is the drain dries out and then water, when you pour water, it hits that drain, it's reacting with something in that drain and you get that smell. So what I uh, suggest you do is take half a cup of bleach and before you go to bed at night, slowly pour it into that, into that drain at where you're having, getting the smell from that faucet and that's gonna clean out that drain and uh, and that's going to uh, get rid of it. Try it. It works. We've we've uh, done it for lots of folks, lots of times. Thanks for the question. Oh, video went off. Sorry, is the video not on? Oh no, it should be on. If it if it went off, uh, check it out. But uh, no, I I think we should still be on. So uh, if anyone else uh, is noticing that the video has gone off, uh, let me know. And uh, all right, so Timo has another question. How about going away if you have an FOK? Do I need to turn it off? Nope, same thing. And again, in my house, um, I, I'm on well water, so I have the full, you know, I've got iron in my water, I got sulfur in my water, my water's hard, um, etc. We had bacteria in the water in the house when we bought it, so I have a full range of equipment. And again, when I go away, I just shut off the main water and go away. And uh, when I come back, turn the water on, regenerate each piece of equipment, not at the same time, but uh, do that. So, um, so no, that's not a problem at all. Hey now, iron, 0.06 uh, milligrams per liter, parts per million, pH 7.93. Which iron filter would you recommend? Uh, it depends on the flow, uh, manganese with smelly water. Yeah, so this would be uh, uh, FOC will take care of that because your iron content is 0 0.06, almost nothing, way below 1.0, 1 
1.0 parts per million of iron. So FOC is the way to go for you. Talk about a quick analysis. Thanks for answering my questions, Gary. This helps me a lot. You're great. And I, oh, geez. Thanks a lot. Hi from Clearwater, Florida. Yeah, we get folks from all over. Uh, we used to get a gentleman from uh, Ireland tuning in, but I'm sure the timing wasn't great for that. But, uh, uh, and we got lots of questions still coming. Keep them up, folks. That's what I'm here for. This is the time. Um, so Jorgen, um, I hope I pronounced that properly. In, in your opinion, what's the most common misconception about water softeners? I would say how they work. That's the most common one. You know, when I started this YouTube channel, like I say, almost 10 years ago, my very first video was how does a water softener work? And although I've remade that video two or three times, that very first media video is one of the most popular videos I've ever made. I think I've got almost half a million views on just that one video. And it's important because people really don't understand how they work. And I don't blame them. Um, I think I had my third water softener before I actually figured out how it worked. That was long before the 19 years ago when I started in this business, mind you. But, um, but yeah, I'd say that's the most common uh, misconception. And in terms of if you want me to, to be a little bit more precise in that answer, I would say that people think by adding salt to your water, that's what softens your water. And it really doesn't work that way. It, uh, and like I say, I've got a great video. Um, it's in the uh, link in the description down below, how a water softener works. I've got an updated one. I encourage you to watch the updated one. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's better than the original one. Mind you, my hair was brown, the original one, but that's another story. So, uh, but yeah, definitely check that out. Uh, Scott Givens replied, thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate the comments. And... Desorba 68. I have a 16-year-old Culligan water softener. It's constantly draining, so the seals need to be replaced. Yep, you're right. Good for you troubleshooting that. That's that's great. But they don't have any due to supply chain constraints. Is there anything that I can do? Um, well, no, actually there isn't. This is where <laughs> I have to kind of restrain myself a little bit. But that's the problem with a proprietary piece of equipment is that um, even a huge company like Culligan, you know, you can only place you can get parts for a Culligan water softener is from Culligan. So if there's supply change issues, you got a problem. If they change the design and that model becomes obsolete and they don't have parts for it anymore, that becomes an issue. Um, how much they charge for them? Again, you can only get it from them so they can really charge you whatever they want. So, and, uh, and that's why I like to stick to non-proprietary components, not just for water softeners, iron filters, UV systems, reverse osmosis systems, you name it, I like non-proprietary. It's the best route for the customer. How do I know what brand it is? It says Culligan all over. Um, yeah, thanks from Rochester, New York. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah, um, Culligan, Boy, Culligan at one time owned a whole bunch of companies that made water softeners for them. And also, I believe they owned Fleck at one time, and they might still own Fleck. I'm pointing also over here, my Fleck 5600, the, Vol the Volkswagen. Uh, anyway, um, at one time, I believe Fleck owned, uh, Culligan owned Fleck, and they made their water softeners. So would a Fleck water softener seals and piston work in your Culligan water softener? That I don't know. Sorry, I, I'm not that familiar with the full range of Fleck products. Uh, as I mentioned, most of my um, dealings are with the Clack water softeners. But uh, sorry, it didn't help you much, I know. Devious DW, do you recommend having a cutoff valve before and after your water softener? Hi from Colorado. Well, welcome. I appreciate you, you tuning in with us. A cutoff valve. So I think a cutoff valve, uh, do you mean a bypass valve so that you can bypass the water softener um, for a number of reasons? Absolutely, I recommend that. So this is a bypass valve. Can we see that? This right here is a bypass valve. So what that means is if you want to fill your swimming pool or a hot tub or for whatever reason, the water softener springs a leak, you turn it like that and it bypasses it. Now no water passes through it. And that's called a bypass valve. Every water softener should have a bypass in case something goes terribly wrong. Do I see them installed from time to time without a bypass? Yep. 
um, but I don't recommend it. If you have an old school water softener or an old school installation, you might have something like this. And this is what's called the three-way bypass. And how, how this works is in a normal everyday use of the water softener, this would be closed. And these two would be open, serving the water softener. If something went terribly wrong with the water softener, or you wanted to fill a hot tub or a swimming pool, you would close these two valves and open this valve. So the only problem with this three-way bypass is that somewhere, sometime, something's going to happen where someone's going to do some service somewhere. They're going to want to shut off the water. They're going to close all three of these valves. And when they're finished doing whatever service they are, and, and sometimes it's plumbers, they end up opening all three valves. And then what happens is your water, instead of going through the water softener, will take a shortcut and go through the bypass. And then your water softener doesn't work. And uh, you can't figure out why. That's why. So that's the three-way bypass. All right. Um, you guys are doing great with your questions. I had prepared some questions in case I didn't get enough uh, from you folks, uh, but uh, it looks like we're not even going to get to those. So, but, uh, but stay tuned. I got a lot of great information still coming. And hey, now, what are a good rule of thumb times for water softener regens? Backwash, brine, flush, Helen Brand in Phoenix. Um, yeah, so, so the default times I find on the clock water softers work really well. So backwash 10 minutes, brine 60 minutes. Um, second backwash, it's usually four. Um, uh, rinse is usually six minutes. And then the fill time is based, it calculates itself based on how hard your water is, etc. So those are kind of some rules of thumb. Um, you know, I'm, I'm big on the defaults that the water softener comes with, other than the hardness settings, of course. But, but I'm really big on, you know, I mean, these people that make these things are engineers that have a lot of background. They know what they're doing. So they really know their products the best. So I always like to start at the default. And if I really, really need to change something, then I will. Okay. So, but thanks for the question. That's great. And Louis has another question. What would you recommend a pre and post filter at the whole house, a uh, home water filter? If so, what micron? So pre and post filter. So it would depend on if you're on uh, well water or if you're on a municipal water. So if you're on municipal water and there's chlorine in the water, a good pre filter would be a carbon filter because the chlorine is really hard on the media inside a water softener. So you could go with a 10, 10 micron or 5 micron carbon filter. If you have a small household, four people or less, you can go with a 10 inch big blue uh, carbon filter. Um, that would work great. If you've got a larger household, more people than that, you can go with 20 inch big blue. That way you don't have to replace, yeah, yeah you don't have to replace it as often. Uh, so that would be a good um, pre-filter for the water softener. For a post filter, you can go with a 5 micron filter. That seems to be a really good filter where uh, it doesn't clog too quickly, but it gets rid of you know, all the particles. I mean, the human eye can see 20 microns, so five microns is a quarter of that size. So it's pretty, pretty small. So uh, that would uh, definitely uh, be a good, uh, a good one that I would recommend. And, oh, and Louie reminded me that I'm my video's still on, so that's great. Nothing worse than doing one of these videos and find out that it's not broadcasting. So thank you, I really appreciate you mentioning that. And Jansen Grace, how do you adjust the time duration between steps during regeneration? Example, eight minutes first backwash, an hour for brine, eight minutes. Yeah, so it depends on the water softener. So if you have a clack valve, uh, clack valve water softener like our Hume uh, products, then um, I've got a great YouTube video. Um, I believe the last or the second last um, live stream I did, I did a whole programming one. Uh, I did it for uh, water softeners. I did it for um, uh, iron filters, FOB, FOCs, those, those guys, tannin filters, et cetera. So I definitely encourage you to check out that video if you have a Clack WS1 valved uh, water softener. If you don't, you'll have to check with whatever brand you have. Some of them allow you to change it, some of them don't. So if you have a Clack valved with the three buttons on the front, okay, as a water softener. Those ones, they're set. You can't change those. There's different program levels, but they're set. Um, so it depends on the water softener you have. So again, you really need to check your manual. Uh, so let's talk that, yeah. Um, <laughs> Jorgen says I got the name right. Oh, great, I'm glad I did. Um, 
Um, JM98JR, uh, spring well water is high quality. Um, yeah, some is, but sp all spring water isn't the same. And I think that's, that's where, um, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier about uh, misconceptions from water softeners. So there's also, also uh, misconceptions for bottled water. And spring water is one of the biggest mi mis misconceptions. Because for you to be able to call it spring water, all you can do is take that water, run it through a, a carbon filter, make sure that it's bacteria free, and then bottle it. But spring water can vary. The, the total dissolved solids in spring water can be... I've tested spring water with total dissolved solids of like 60, 70 uh, parts per million. And I've tested some of it that's 600 parts per million, which is kind of interesting considering that drinking water standard is 500 parts per million or less. So spring water can be all over the map. Uh, if you have spring water and you like it and you're happy with the water quality, then great. That's fine. I'm not here to change your mind. Uh, what we do here is... Um, is we help families conquer crappy water. So if your water, if you're not happy with your water, that's what we do here. We, um, I, I have different methods to fix that water so it's not uh, crappy water for your family. But, uh, but thanks for your comment. I appreciate it. And Daniel McQueen, my pressure drops to zero when, within the first minute during the backwash of the regeneration. I have a 3050 pressure switch. The switch is fine. And so is the pressure tank. What might the problem be? Flow rate. So you've either got a restriction somewhere or something's going on with your pump. And uh, so um, in our areas here <clears throat> um, on well water where people have a lot of iron, what happens is over the years, so years ago we used to use something called a MAZI. So it was um, connected to the, the water line coming in from the well before the pressure tank. It's a, a little T-shaped valve and what it does is sucked in air. And what that does, it oxidized or brought the iron out of the water. So the new FOBs and FOCs do that at the top of the valve, but these ones sucked it in. So what happened was after the MAZI, all this iron would accumulate inside the pipes and literally the pipe would get smaller and smaller and smaller in diameter inside. You wouldn't see it from the outside. So, and what that means, it would restrict the flow more and more and more. And that's probably what's happening with yours. Is your, is your pressure is fine, but the flow, how many gallons per minute is running through that pipe is being restricted. So if you can open up that pipe, do it. Okay, I think you're gonna find that there's gonna be some restrictions in there. If not, then it's a pump issue. So definitely check those things out. Uh, here. Danny, welcome Danny. Do you need to flush a pressure tank? Danny from Maple, Ontario. Absolutely. Um, I definitely suggest that you take a hose, connect it to the base of your pressure tank and flush that pressure tank at least once a year. Next question you're gonna ask is, Gary, do you do that? No, I don't. I, I don't do it as often as I should, that's for sure. Uh, shoemaker and his shoes, I guess. But anyway, um, yeah, that's definitely something I suggest. And uh, so definitely that will help maintain your system and uh, keep everything working better. And uh, if you've got iron in your water, that iron is gonna build up at the base of your pressure tank and you might as well get rid of it there as opposed to running it through your water filtration equipment and having it deal with it. But good question, Danny. Uh, Louis says, thanks. Uh, Jansen says, thanks. Uh, uh, JM98 Junior, spring, wa spring well water, the company. Okay, so it's a company that distributes uh, spring water. Okay, great. Um, question about municipal water. DVS DW, I'm on municipal water. And uh, water chlorine levels, uh, would you consider getting a pre-filter? If you were planning... Uh, to use an Aquamaster water softener and an RO. So one of the so in case folks uh, aren't no, aren't 100% sure what Danny's talking about here, an Aquamaster water softener. There is a model that also removes chlorine from your water. So the Aquamaster AMS 950, um, we have it on our Canadian uh, website. Um, so it softens the water and it also removes chlorine and it also has a built-in uh, sediment filter. Excuse me, it also uses something like uh, um, a product. Sorry, the name slip, slipped my mind. But it helps the, the filter that removes the chlorine work better and last longer. So the beauty of the system is the filters are self-cleaning and they last the life of the system, which is usually 20 years plus. And uh, so if you have an Aquamaster AMS 950 with the built-in carbon filter, then you don't need to. But if you're on municipal water, I always recommend putting a... Um, 
and you have chlorine in your water, put in a carbon filter before the water softener. Make the water softener last longer, and you won't have to deal with the chlorine. Uh, an RO, well, an RO is just for your drinking water, right? So an RO will also has carbon filter in it. So if you if you're if you're budget minded, you can get an AMS 700 uh, Aquamaster water softener and not remove the chlorine from your whole house, and just remove the chlorine from your drinking water. Now, if you have someone's sensitive skin, like my wife has sensitive skin, so when we lived uh, in in town on uh, municipal water, we had to have a water softener that also removed the chlorine, and then a reverse osmosis for the drinking water. But uh, I hope that answers your question. Uh... Is salt crystals better for salt bridge? Um, I don't like salt crystals. No, sorry. The short answer is no, it's not. Um, I don't like salt crystals. Nothing clogs a water. Well, actually, potassium chloride clogs a water softener faster than salt crystals, but just. Um, again, we're in cottage country here. People don't live here full time. So the, the salt doesn't turn over as quickly in a water softener in a cottage type or cabin type um, situation. So what happens is, it, the salt clogs. And if you have crystal salt, it's going to clog in no time. So I always re prefer the pellets. I do have a great uh, and a, a very popular YouTube video I made a few years ago about uh, how to choose what kind of salt. I recommend the Windsor salt. I think they call it clean and protect. It looks like a pill or a lozenge. I find that the best kind of salt. Clogs the least. And uh, you can get it quite inexpensively. I mean, obviously we sell it, but we can't buy it by the tractor trailer load. So uh, Walmart is the cheapest place to buy it, at least here in Ontario it is. So um, yeah, so that's what I would recommend. Daniel McQueen says, thank you. What are your thoughts on solar salt versus Windsor System Saver for the clock I've been told that some manufacturer will avoid if not using solar salt. Yeah, so I think what, about the manufacturer that voids their warranty um, with solar salt is um, Viqua. At one time, and I don't know if they still sell it or not, Viqua sold a water softener that they said also removed iron and also got rid of sulfur. And, and it needed this solar salt to work. It, the, the cleaners that were in Windsor System Saver would um, cause damage to the media. Um, those water softeners are horrible. <laughs> I can't remember the name of them exactly, and I don't know if they still sell them or not, but they almost never worked. I can't, I can't, I mean, the water softener part of it worked, but in terms of uh, removing sulfur from your water, forget it. It was a joke. And uh, I even spoke to some of the Viqua technicians about it, and uh, you could tell they were very cagey about their answers because, yeah, they're just not a good uh, choice. So, but definitely if your manufacturer says to use solar salt, then use solar salt. To be honest, in our area here in cottage country, I don't even know where you would buy solar salt. Um, I've never seen a bag myself, to be honest. So uh, anyway, um, considering updating, oh, hey now, updating from my Helen brand softener, my total hardness is nine grains per gallon, iron less than one. Do you sell just uh, the Clack WS1 for me to replace the heads? Yes, or should I go with a complete new setup? Yeah, we sell just the valves. Um, not a real big fan on just replacing the valve because the media does have a life expectancy and I always prefer to sell a whole unit because that way we know it's going to be 100% compatible. So I mean if your water softener is five years old or less and the tank is five years old or less, you're not on chlorinated, chlorinated water supply, you'd, like you say you've only got one part per million of iron. Um, yeah, you may want to do that but I mean uh, how much more is it? I think it's about four or five, depending on if you're in Canada or the U.S. Uh, it's about four or five hundred dollars more to replace the whole thing as opposed to just replacing the valve. Um, to be honest, I know it's in my best interest, but I also believe it's in your best interest to uh, replace the whole thing. I think that would work out best for you. Ah, changed media last month. Cash monies. Changed media last month. Your videos helped a lot. Thanks, Gary. Yeah, that uh, video that I did on uh, replacing the media became a very popular vi uh, video very fast. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. And I appreciate everyone that shares that video too. Lots of folks have, uh, got, we've gotten tons of positive comments on that video. And uh, thanks, thanks for that. Um, I lost all pressure in the house and turned off my water softener and water pressure return. It was fun changing the media. We sifted out all the pebbles to reuse 
to reuse in a bucket. Yeah, some water softeners have um, pebbles or uh, stones or gravel at the bottom of them. Some don't. Ours don't, um, but some of them do. And uh, so, again, if, if your manufacturer uh, suggests that you should have uh, gravel at the bottom of your water softeners, do it. Definitely uh, put it in. Um, if they don't, then don't. Uh, it's something uh, you don't need to, to add. Um, Danny, great question. Uh, should the sediment filter be before or after the pressure tank? After. Um, we don't want to put anything before the pressure tank, and I'll tell you why. Um, like there's spin down filters that, that they recommend going before the pressure tank. That Mazzy valve I talked about earlier before the pressure tank, uh, that kind of thing. Yeah, those, um, those things were recommended to go before the pressure tank. The problem is this. If that ever clogs, what it's going to do is you're going to have low pressure, right? So the pressure switch is going to be telling the pump, hey pump, you need to pump more water because uh, we're not at 50 PSI yet or whatever the cutoff pressure is. And we're never going to get there because of this filters clogged and the pump will just keep going and going and going and you burn out your pump. So no, we don't want to put anything before the pressure tank. But that's a great question. I get that question a lot too. So... Um, Brian is with us. I have a home on well water, tested raw water, and it's high in sodium, over 20 milligrams per liter, yet hardness is high. How can I adjust um, my softener to get sodium under? Um, you can't. Uh, that's that's the, the, the short answer. Um, the only way you can remove sodium from your water is reverse osmosis. That's it. There's no other way. I get questions about this all the time, and uh, so... Um, if you're looking for to get your drinking water to below 20 milligrams per liter or 20 parts per million, which is um, drinking water standard is 200 parts per million, but 20 parts per million is what's recommended for a low sodium diet. We should all be on low sodium diets. So I definitely suggest you get a reverse osmosis system. My Water Saver 75 is the one that I recommend. Uh, if you're looking for a link to it, just add it in the comments down below. I'll, uh, I'll add a link to it uh, after the live stream is done. And uh, um, op optical inch. Uh, what do you think of kinetic systems? Um, I don't want to get a cease and desist order <laughs> going here. Um, uh, let's just say it this way. I'm not a fan for the same reasons as I'm not a fan of any proprietary product, be it a water softener, iron filter, ultraviolet disinfection system. If, if a brand... If you can only get parts from that company, they're holding you ransom. Okay, they're holding you ransom in terms of uh, if they decide to change the, the the design in the future and stop making parts, you're out of luck. Um, if they want to raise the prices on those parts, you're out of luck. Um, in in my in town on municipal water systems, I think Connecticut water softeners work pretty well and they seem to last a long time. Uh, Connecticut makes a big deal that their water softeners don't use any hydro, which is 100% true. But you got to realize a water softener like this only uses our Hume uh, water filtration water softeners, only use $2 worth of hydro a year. So it's almost nothing. Um, and uh, the non proprietary thing gets me how much they cost. It's a high efficiency water softener, but when I compare it to our Aquamaster water softeners, um, they're, they're much less costly and uh, and I believe they work much better on well water you may have problems we've had problems with customers on well water but a hundred percent make sure whether you've already got a Connecticut water softener or whether you're gonna get a water a Connecticut water softener you have to have a 20 micron at least 20 micron pre filter before that water softener to catch the dirt if you don't you're gonna have problems if you're on well water that fluctuation in the in the pressure you're gonna have problems uh, if you're on well water without a pre-filter, you're really going to have problems. So, so check those things out. Um, again, I don't. I want to avoid a cease and desist order, so I'm not going to say any more about that topic. But uh, thanks for asking, though. Uh, Gary, thank you so much for your videos. I've learned so much and appreciate your time. Oh, you're welcome. It's so nice to find someone who shares their knowledge. Yeah, I uh, I enjoy doing that. And uh, bravo, thank you. Hey, now I really appreciate that. Uh, your comment. Um, 
Brian has another. Thanks. The home does have an RO system for several taps. Just wanted the clarification. Yeah, Brian, that's great. And uh, that's the best way to do it is reverse osmosis for drinking water and all the filtration. And I get the que I just had the question today. What about a whole home reverse osmosis system? If there's any way you can avoid a whole home reverse osmosis system, do it. Um, we sell them. We install them. We service them. But it's a last resort. Okay, so um, even if you have to have two or three small uh, reverse osmosis systems, single faucet, with even with a couple extra taps attached with a booster pump or something like that, you're far better off than going with a whole home reverse osmosis system. Uh... Uh, Danny has, does a water softener remove iron? Yes, a water softener, that's a great question, Danny. A uh, water softener will remove up to 1.0 parts per million of iron. You can get water softeners with some modifications to them that will handle up to 2 parts per million of iron. Once you get beyond that, it will remove the iron up to a point, but you'll get some iron coming through. It'll clog the water softener. You'll have maintenance concerns, you know, all kinds of stuff. So if you have iron in your water, have it tested, find out how much iron you have. By the way, we do offer free, free testing. If you mail us a water sample, I recommend a liter of water. If you mail it to us, um, our address is 1004 King Street, Midland, Ontario, L4R0B8. Um, if, you, if that was too quick for you, I'll put it in the comments uh, down below if you really want to know. We, we don't charge for the water testing, um, but if you get tested locally, definitely find out how much, your, how much iron you have in your water because uh, it will cause grief. Um, I'm a water operator. Landed a job doing residential and your videos have been my learning. Haha. <laughs> well, great, Brian. That's the whole point here. Um, I mean, I have uh, lots of plumbers that watch my videos. I've had plumbers, especially in the U.S., asking me about putting on courses specifically for plumbers to, to help them with their water filtration. I mean, plumbers have a huge wide area, just like water treatment operators, right? And uh, so I specialize in this area. So I'm glad you're um, uh, following the information that I have on here and I'm glad if it, it broadens your base and you can help your customers that much better right ah. here's a loaded question from Tim O when my water softener regenerates is it bad for my septic system Wow, this um, this has gone round and round and round for such a long time if you ask anybody that installs septic systems they'll say absolutely yes and um, there's been lots of studies done. It doesn't affect the anaerobic action. If you have a concrete septic tank, you may get some corrosion on the output from that septic tank. Um, but it takes a long, long, long time. The thing is, where do you drain the water softener to? If it doesn't go into the septic, where do you run it to? Yeah, you can run it outside. It's going to kill the grass. It's going to kill, kill the vegetation. If you're in an area like we are, where the, there's freezing temperatures outside for three or four months of the year, okay that line is you have to protect it from freezing which is almost impossible what's the best solution dig a dry well we do a lot of work with custom home builders in the area and often what they do is they dig a dry well they dig a big hole in the ground fill it full of rocks and underneath the frost line run a separate drain line that they run uh, from the water softener and a few other uh, pieces of equipment a uh, gray water if you like and uh, so that's the best solution um, Gary, where does your septic, uh, where does your water softener hooked up? It's to my septic tank. My home has had water softeners for at least 20, 25 years. Um, the previous owner never had any problems with the septic and nor do I. So uh, it's the common practice. Um, Danny's back. The reason why I'm asking is I have iron, but I don't have any iron after my water softener. That's right. That's exactly right. So the water softener is removing your iron. And, uh, and truth be told, an iron filter typically removes about 90% of your iron. It'll never remove all of it. That's why in almost all applications, we end up putting in a water, uh, an iron filter and a water softener after it because the water softener finishes off the water, getting rid of the iron, and of course softens the water. Great question. Uh, I have a trailer park of 12 trailers dug well with high iron has three filter capsules in the order of harm school cartridge filter with iron removal cartridge and a clock valve um, 
Yeah, uh, that, that will work. I mean, there's lots of different ways to get rid of iron in lots of different uh, situations. And uh, definitely a sediment filter in a situation like that where there's a, water, a lot of water being used at the same time. Um, sediment filter, uh, iron filter cartridge, backwashable iron filter, that kind of thing. Uh, you wouldn't bother putting in a water softener in that kind of a scenario. But that would uh, definitely work. Um... Right, and uh, Danny added that he doesn't have an uh, iron filter. That's right, because your water softener is taking care of that iron. Uh, Brian, uh, then water softener, then turbidity filter, all clock. Oh, he's just continuing on. I replaced the iron filter with new media, but the harm skill filter constantly gets plugged with iron sludge. Um, uh, what type of filter, I think... Uh, should be used instead of the Harmsco cartridge filter. You ever try to spin down filter? So I have them on my website, wateresteor.com, and I think that's the US one, wateresteor.ca. Um, spin down filter is kind of a T-shaped device, and uh, it has a very coarse filter in it, usually 60 microns. And, uh, and then you open up a valve at the bottom, centrifugal force spins the dirt inside and flushes it out. It's a very coarse type filter. A lot of contractors install it when they first build a house and first put in a well. I would definitely suggest something like that. Uh, we've had a lot of good success with those and it, it does the heavy lifting for you. And I would put that on before everything else. Um, yeah, I don't have an iron filter. How often should you clean a salt tank if the salt is leaving sediment once a year? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> some people use rock salt in their water softeners. I know even Culligan's salt that they recommend is rock salt. In other words, it has dirt in it. And uh, so what happens is water goes in, dissolves the salt, makes brine, sucks out the brine. Guess what it leaves behind? Dirt. So that dirt all ends up at the bottom. So if you have an older water softener, especially an old uh, fleck valved uh, water softener or an old Culligan, when you finally dig out the salt to the bottom, you'll see lots of dirt down there. So um, how often should you clean out the brine tank? Once a year, it's pretty ambitious. Um, it would be great for me to say that, but I would clean it out at least every five years. I think that would be good preventative maintenance and that would keep things going. One thing I suggest to everyone is once a year, run out of salt. Yeah, I know that sounds counter counterintuitive but once a year run out of salt that way you get use up all the sludge at the bottom and go from there and then you'll have minimal problems if you ran out once once a year and then cleaned it out every five years you'd be doing really really well and you save your money a uh, long time by doing great maintenance on your water softener uh, should you take a water softener sorry um, Tim K, should you take the water softener out of regen when you shut the water off for vacation? Should you take the water softener out of regen? Not exactly sure what you mean, out of regen. Um, I wouldn't regenerate it. I'd just leave it in service and, uh, and then shut off your water when you go away. Um, Iron before or after water softener? Yes, an iron filter goes before the water softener. So you've got your pressure tank. If you've got some kind of filtration, uh, coarse filtration, like I just talked about a spin down filter, it would be after the pressure tank. Then you'd go to, or an automatic backwashing sediment filter if you have one. And then it would go to the iron filter. Then it would go to the water softener. Then it would go to a tannin filter if you have tannins in your water. Then it would go to a pre-filter for the UV light. Then it would go to the UV light. And then it would go, uh, sorry, uh, pre-filter for the UV light, then a carbon filter before the UV light, and then the UV light and go into the whole house. That's sort of if you have everything, right? Um, Daniel McQueen, what is the average lifespan of media resin? What are the warning signs that it's time to change? When, the, when everything's working on the water softener, it's drawing brine, it's using salt, everything is working but nothing is working. In other words, it's not softening your water anymore. That tells you that it's time to change the resin or that it's clogged. All of a sudden you notice that the flow in the house is slowing down. You go to have a shower, it's not coming out as quickly as it did before. A week later, it's slower still. And then you go downstairs, you bypass your water softener. All of a sudden you got great flow. That tells you that water softener is clogged. The media is broken down and now it's time to change uh, the media or to change out the water softener. Um, 
Uh, what's the average lifespan? Um, yeah, it, it depends. If you're on a chlorinated water supply, uh, I've seen it affect chlorinated water supply seven, eight years. I've seen it kill water softeners. Very rare, um, but I've seen that happen. Unchlorinated water supply, I've seen 25 years. I think someone here mentioned earlier that they had a water softener that was over 30 years old um, that was still working. I believe it was still working. Um, anyway, and uh, so without chlorine, the, it, it can last. Uh, Daniel says, mine lasted four to five years and I lost all pressure in the house. Yeah, and, and so so are, were you on a, um, that's, a good, that's a good comment. Were you on a chlorinated water supply like a municipal water or was it on well water? It'd be interesting to know. Does the spin down filter remove iron and where does it get installed? It gets installed, if you're for sure going to be vigilant, it gets installed before the pressure tank. Uh, to make sure you keep opening that up. If there's any chance that someone's going to forget to do that and it might clog, then put it after the pressure tank. The advantage of putting it before the pressure tank, you get the full blast flow from your pressure from your pump. The, the uh, advantage of putting it after the pressure tank is if it gets clogged, it's not going to uh, kill your pump. So, um, so the safe way is to put it after the pressure tank. The best, most efficient way for it to work is to put it before the pressure tank. But you have to be more vigilant, as I said. Um, and does it remove iron? It will remove some iron, but not a lot. Okay. Um, if you have iron, don't count on the spin down filter removing the iron. You'll, yeah, it'll turn orange and you'll see, hey, there's some iron there, but not enough for you to notice in the house. Um, got Sam here. Welcome, Sam. Hi, um, well water and I have an iron filter that removes all the iron out of the water. Now I'm looking to buy a water softener. I have a hardness table of 96 uh, GBG. What softener do I need to buy? Um, I wonder if you need, mean uh, 96 um, grains per gallon. That would be GPG. 96 grains per gallon is incredibly high. That's... Um, that's like 1,700 parts per million. So um, you may want to check that out to see if you've got 96 parts per million or you really have 96 uh, grains per gallon. Anyway, I can definitely help you with that. Um, if you send me an email, info at watereastore.com, info at the word water, the letter E, the word store.com, and I can help you with that one-on-one -on -one better than in this form. Um, but, uh, but, but give me that. So I would need to know that. I'd need to know if there's any iron in your water. I need to know how many people in your household to, to be able to figure out how much water you use. And then I can answer that question for you. And I'd be happy to do that. Um, sorry, I kind of lost my place here. We talked about, okay. Yep. Sorry. Sorry, folks. Iron filter before or after softener. Iron filter goes before. What's happened here? Uh, no. <laughs> For some reason, it's sending the wrong one. I apologize, folks. Oh, no, we sent that one already. There. On the clock WS1, when you press the up and the down buttons at the same time, are those settings prefix because as we as as went through the settings it didn't appear to have any settings to change um, Alan I'm going to suggest you uh, check out my programming live stream that was two live streams streams ago if you go to my um, YouTube channel GaryTheWaterGuy.com and go into the live streams uh, you'll see clock WS1 programming and I go right into that in detail and uh, that's I, I'm sorry I don't have time to answer that question in detail right here right now so uh, so I definitely refer you to that check that out and first I thought it was my water furnace but only found out when I shut off water softener and pressure went back to normal so problem was with water softener yeah and uh, that's that's one of the great things about having a bypass on the water softener is that's how you can troubleshoot that end of it right um, some of the homes water system I look after filter system is backwards has well feeding 5-1 carbon filters then iron filter 
followed by water softener than UV. Carbon in this order is it a waste? Um, yeah, <laughs> quite bluntly, yeah. I mean, um, this is a, a good example. And you know what? I see this all the time. And why it happens is two reasons. One is um, someone isn't familiar with water filtration and they put it in a system and they kind of think about it in their head but they don't do any research. That's one reason. The second reason is one piece of equipment gets put in and by one person and then a little while later another piece of equipment gets put in by another person and they don't really understand what's going on and then you get this configuration of stuff out of sync and uh, and that's what happens so what should be happening here okay let's have a look at this um, so you would in this particular situation I would go iron filter first followed by the water softener and then it would be the five micron sediment filter the carbon a uh, one micron sediment filter the carbon filter and then the UV that would be the correct order to do this in okay yeah, chlorinated and Houston water is known for bad water. It is, and it's hard on the water softener, unless you have something to, a carbon filter to remove the, um, the chlorine before it gets to it. I have a hard water level from a well water of 96 grains per gallon, or, or white water uh, softener. Do I have in case to make it stop? Thank you or white water softener water softener do i need to have in case to make a stop thank you yeah we definitely have water softeners that can help you and like i say send me an email and uh, i can help you with that uh, better than i can here live on on the forum like i say let me know if you have any iron let me know how many people in your household and uh, and i can reply uh, with something that can uh, definitely help you out and what do i have here there are three types of iron, can you explain? Yes, there's ferrous iron, which is clear water iron. In other words, um, when it um, comes, uh, clear water, in other words, when it comes out of the, your faucet, it's clear, there's no color to it. You let that water sit in a pail or a toilet and it turns color. There's ferric iron, which is um, the iron has already been oxidized out of the water, so it comes out of the faucet colored. It already has that rusty color. And then bacterial iron is the, um, is the slime, is where you get that slime build up in the back of your toilets. The only real way to deal with bacterial iron is with chemical injection system. Uh, that's a technology I don't know a lot about. So when I get people that have bacterial iron, I usually suggest they find someone local that can help them better because it's not something I know a whole lot about. What's your opinion of UV pure UV systems, Hallett? Any experience with them? Yes, I do. Uh, we've sold a couple of these. We've installed a couple of these. I've done maintenance on some of these. Um, they're, theoretically, they're a great system. Okay, They make a lot of sense. They've got these scrapers. They've got these two ultraviolet lights. Um, they're a great system. The problem with them is, they're, or the problem that I've found with them is that they're too complicated. Um, the fan breaks down, the scrapers, the motors for the scrapers break down. Um, I just found that there's better solutions um, for uh, that are a lot less costly. Let's just put it that way. Um, they're less costly up front, less costly in the long run. Um, they're easier to maintain, they're more consistent, and you don't have to buy two bulbs every time you replace the lamp. So um, that that's the, and, and like I said, those systems are pretty much double what a similar type uh, UV system is. So um, I don't recommend them. Let's just say, let's just uh, put it there. Thank you for your email support. Yeah, absolutely. Um, after regeneration, we start off with 786 gallons for a family of three. This lasts for, for a week. Is this ideal? It's what your water softener gives you. So your water softener is programmed with your hardness and it's also programmed with how big it is. So based on that, it figures out how many gallons you have and then you use your water. So we calculate 75 gallons per person per day, which is a lot, okay? But that's what we calculate. So for three people, that's 225 gallons. That lasts you for a week. Um, so 786 gallons is a lot. So your water softener is sized correctly and, uh, and your family's frugal with water. That's great. So is that ideal? I would say absolutely yes. Um, 
I have to follow the EER, EER report that an engineer designed for the system. That's why they have the 5-1 carbon. Oh, okay. Well, and uh, so it uh, likely is someone that's a whole lot smarter than I am. And uh, so if that's what they recommend, then that's what it is. Um, you know, there's more than one way to do things. I do things that have worked for me and for my customers, and that's uh, most of the units I've worked with are Viqua Pro 1030s, yeah, and UV Dynamics. Don't mind the Trojans, just wish plumbers would have put drain valves where they should be to, to service them easily. Well, that's the thing. With commercial systems, um, the valves need to be installed in certain places so you can uh, drain them, you can... Um, uh, maintain them more easily and that kind of thing. If you get residential installers installing commercial systems, they don't realize that. And uh, so it's, it, it, it's, it's a bit of a, a little bit different, right? Does a sediment filter before the pressure tank keep the pressure tank clean and would it last longer? Yes, it would. Um, but again, I don't recommend it. I would never put a um, sediment filter before my pressure tank. I would instead hook up a hose to the pressure tank once a year, drain the pressure tank to get all the stuff out of the bottom, and go on from there. I think it's far safer. Um, uh, yes, yes, uh, we were talking about those units. Um, got Ed here. Welcome, Ed. What is the maximum number of days? number of days before regeneration of water softener. Metering of my system calculates at about 3,000 gallons before regenerating, but it takes three to four weeks. Yeah, so we get that happening up here in cottage country too. So what happens is your water softener is oversized. So, um, so what happens in cottage country here, just so you folks know, is that uh, there's uh, cottages built up here in Muskoka that are basically a blank check. They, they want this fabulous cottage, so the contractor goes in and he puts in equipment that's too big. And the only, what they don't realize by putting in these equipment that's too big, now maybe the, the cottage or cabin owner told them, we've got parties with 50 or 60 people staying here on the weekend. I don't know, but they put in this equipment that's too big. And then what happens is the reality sets in that, um, like Ed here, uh, they go through 3,000 gallons before it regenerates, it takes three to four weeks, and it will eventually compromise the media. And that's why the clack water softeners have an override that after 14 days, they automatically regenerate. So Ed, I don't know what kind of valve you have on your water softener, but if you can, uh, if it has a day's override, set it for 14 days, yep, you're gonna be using more salt, uh, but you're gonna extend the life of that water softener. That is too long. It should, should not be more than uh, 14 days, that's for sure. Great question though, Ed, thank you. Uh, Peter, um, Gary, I have a green sand infrared filter to remove iron with potassium permanganate regeneration. My well water has 1.1 parts per million of iron. I am 60 of green sand in my filter. What's the frequency of regeneration? So oh, green sand. So what's green sand? Green sand is very old technology for iron and sulfur removal. It uses this chemical called potassium permanganate. And Peter would tell you, if you spill any of that on your hands, your hands are gonna turn totally brown and it's gonna be really, really difficult to get that off your hands. Uh, that's an aside. Um, we, I haven't installed one of these things for at least 15 or 20 years. We try to go with the chemical free systems. And the reason for that is this uh, potassium permanganate is a very, very volatile, uh, very corrosive uh, oxidizer, and, uh, and it will get into your septic systems and it will wreak havoc in your septic systems. Frequency of regeneration, sorry for the aside there, Peter, every three days, um, that's, that's the best. I mean, some of them you can program for 500 gallons if you can do that with yours, but it still should be 500 gallons or three days, whichever comes first. If you've got a small host household of two people, you might try extending that for four days but it really should be every three days, just so you know. Um, I don't think engineers are smarter, just inexperienced. Well, that may be true. Although I have to admit, I went to school as a mechanical engineer, but you're not offending me with that comment. <laughs> uh, Brian says, thanks again. Steve Young, should the water level in my aerator tank be at a level of the spray nozzles? If not, is that tank fluid adjustable or lower? Uh, great question, Steve. An aerator tank, just for any of you folks that don't know, is a tank that 
is exactly how it sounds. It aerates the, the water, it's sprayed in there, it aerates it, and it helps, uh, oxi ox it oxidizes, right? That's what happens inside an FOB, FOC, or FOK, but to a smaller degree. And it oxidizes out the iron, oxidizes out the sulfur, and it works great. Um, Steve's asking me a question here about the, the, the level of spray nozzles. Steve, I'm sorry, I don't know. Um, this is a technology I have never used. I'm aware of it. I've seen it in action, but I've never used it. None of my customers have it. So I can't really help you with that. So, um, uh, and Saspuda um, has, uh, says hi on here, and that's great. And uh, so this is going to be the last question. I've got a few little things to, to end up, but this is going to be the last question. Your videos helped me with a project about water infrastructure. Well, I'm glad it has helped you, and that's great. Uh, thanks very much for watching. So I promised a few other things here. So let me get back to the things I promised. So some of you participated in the poll, and the poll was um, 32 people voted. Wow, thanks for that. And the poll was, the question was, what do you like best about having a water softener for your family? And what was the number one? Makes my appliances last longer. And that's great, and that's, and that's a good point. I'll bet you if you ask your wives that same question, and I'm not being sexist or race or whatever here, just ask whoever does the cleaning in your household, ask them how important it is to them that the water softener makes their house easier to keep clean. And I think if I asked whoever does the cleaning in your house to do this poll, they might come back with uh, different answers than you folks did. So anyway, I really appreciate everyone that uh, that uh, participated in that poll. That was great. I really appreciate that. And uh, I promised a few things here, didn't I? And uh, so one thing I promised was um, buyer's guide. And uh, so so for some of you that um, have, uh, have never bought a water softener, I'm going to give you some hints and some things to go buy. Number one, buy a made North America water softener. What? Is there such a thing? Absolutely. There are made in North America water softeners. Our Hume water softeners are made in North America. The valves are made in North America. They're assembled in North America. And, uh, and that's very important. Why? It's because I've tried the Chinese and the Korean water softeners. We've installed them for other people. They're nothing but trouble. You can't get parts for them. Oh yeah, if you buy them from a big box store, they'll say, well, no problem, bring it back. Yeah, right. So you pay someone to install it. Now you gotta pay someone to uninstall it throw it in the back of your car, you gotta race down to their big box store where you got it, and they'll give you a new one. Yeah, but now you gotta pay me to put it back in again and hope that it's not gonna be the same problem again. So you can't get parts for them, you can't get manuals for them, there's no troubleshooting videos because they're like a, to a toaster, you throw them away, they're disposable. Um, make sure someone offers support, okay? so. That means that someone's going to give you support. It, it can be someone local or it can be someone online like, like our company, for example. We offer support for all the products we sell. We're authorized dealers. So if you're looking for support, we can offer you that. And uh, so you have to make sure and, uh, and make sure there's support too on places like YouTube. Are there YouTube videos for the, the water software that you're, that you're buying so that you make sure that you can figure it out how it works yourself. You can, um, if there's a problem, you know how to troubleshoot or at least you know what to tell someone that's going to help you troubleshoot that. Do your due diligence. Like I say, um, investigate things. Um, check reviews on websites like ours, watereastore.com or watereastore.ca in Canada. We've got lots of reviews on there. We've got well over a thousand reviews. A lot of good information there. Um, beware of ridiculous warranties, 20-year warranties. Um, these are crazy. I mean, we offer a five-year warranty. That's great. Usually if there's a problem, it, it surfaces pretty much right away. But these 20-year warranties are a joke. You just try to get 18 or 15 years from now, you just try to get warranty on that. I had a, I met a guy at a home show. He had a 20-year warranty on, I don't know what it was, uh, some, some make of uh, water softener. And the media went in it. And they said, oh yeah, no problem. Um, the media is under warranty, but we have to charge you for replacing it. It's $950. So obviously that, that warranty was just a joke, right? <clears throat> water softeners to avoid. There's two kinds to avoid. Proprietary water softeners, I'm not a huge fan because first of all, they're expensive. Secondly, if you need service, you have to go back to them. If their service is terrible, too bad, you're stuck with them. So that's one problem with them. The other problem is they can charge whatever they want, okay? 
But the number one type of water softener you definitely want to avoid is the no salt or salt free water softeners, okay? Because <laughs> we've been approached by those uh, companies many, many times, and I always ask the same question, and this is the same question you should ask them. If my water is a hardness of 15 before your device, what's the hardness going to be after the device? And, if, and they probably won't answer, but if you eventually get them to answer truthfully, it'll be 15. The hardness is 15 before and it's 15 after. With an actual water softener that uses salt, it'll be 15 before and it'll be zero after. Big difference. So what do I recommend? Like I say, a clock valve water softener, um, totally non-proprietary, something that you can get manuals and get help from on YouTube and, uh, and go that route. And, um, and again, like I say, as I mentioned earlier, if you like my videos, please subscribe. That way you'll be notified as the new ones become available and you can just check out your um, subscription um, and uh, all the information will be there. And uh, thanks for everyone for voting. Thanks for watching. I offer new videos every Saturday, 5 a.m. Eastern time, except the weeks that I do a live stream. And uh, upcoming videos be promoted on our uh, the community tab of our uh, YouTube channel. And, and again, that's where you'll get the information there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.